Your green card application was rejected. The Labor Department didn't believe your company nope. actually existed, and you had to leave your company to yeah. actually get, my get your yeah. right. Exactly. So my previous company, Taxi Magic, which invented the way you book ground travel on your mobile phone, this is before Uber, before Lyft, um, it was sponsoring me for my green card. I had been in the U.S. at that point for almost you know 15 years. And um, the Labor Department said, you own too much equity, so you get to decide who gets hired and who doesn't. And so we can't qualify you for a green card. And you know, then I had a choice of whether I could apply again and try to prove to them that they should give me a green card or not, or go to a bigger company where I could get a green card and I end up at Google, which handles this stuff very well, and was able to get my green card, and here I am. So I'm, in some ways, the example of the high-tech labor that maybe Mr. Trump does not really love very much. So it and yet, even under uh, the Obama administration, your case was handled, it was a challenge. Yeah. So how do you think your case would be handled under a Trump administration? Uh, probably not very well, I would suspect. Um, but you know, the Obama administration actually did some really interesting things for entrepreneurs in the last um, uh, few years. So now you can have a different type of visa if you're an entrepreneur and have raised money for a company, which is really helpful. I um, would guess that's going to probably go away under the Trump administration, because that was a regulatory decision rather than a law. Um, but I think H-1Bs are also a huge issue, because if we don't have H-1Bs, that's going to really hurt uh, tech companies' ability to be able to hire. I mean, we have probably at least 10 people at Shift who are on H-1Bs right now. And of they are all many? doing, uh, I'm sorry? Of how many people? Of 70 people. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, that's a really large percentage. And that's all labor that we really badly need. Um, for our team to be successful, because uh, oftentimes we have people who you can't hire in the U.S. with H-1Bs. So, you know, the critics, including Trump, Jeff Sessions, the, the, the president-elect choice for attorney general, uh, he, he has said thousands of U.S. workers are being replaced by foreign labor. Uh, you do have some examples that have been pointed out at Disney, uh, at, at Southern California Edison, of this, uh, you know, type of visa potentially being abused. Yep. You know, what do you say to the, the people who are very fearful? So I think okay. first they should distinguish between tech companies like a startup like Shift or Google or Microsoft from, you know, outsourced companies in India that also bring foreign workers to actually do outsourcing of labor. Uh, and those are two very different things, and I don't think we should put them all in one kind of bucket. Um, and then secondly, I think you should probably also segment based on what type of jobs we're talking about. I mean, for engineers, like, there's not an engineer that Google uh, would qualify as this person passed my bar that they would not hire, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they're foreign or, or, or American. And so we shouldn't worry about those types of jobs. There are probably other sets of jobs that we might need to worry about a little bit further. Mm -hmm. But I think for the jobs that we talk about here in Silicon Valley, that's not in any way an issue. We have a labor shortage. We don't have a job shortage. So as a legal immigrant, uh, I'm curious, are uh, current, you know, people who are living here currently or people who are considering coming to the United States, rethinking their plans. Are they considering going to Canada or going to Europe uh, or, or going to places where they believe? Um, to, I'm talking about high-tech skilled yeah. workers. I think that's a really serious issue because, you know, we, in Silicon Valley, we su succeed when we have foreigners working with Americans and building great companies. Something like half of the companies that are worth a billion dollars or more right now that are startups were co-founded by a foreign Person. So very clearly, this is an additive thing for the United States. And so the campaign was super uh, negative. I think it made a lot of people feel very uncomfortable. And it'd be really awesome if we could try to move away from that and actually make people feel very welcome in the US. Now, I think we as CEOs and other tech leaders can do a lot to make that happen. I mean, again, at Shift, we're always very open to immigrants who are coming to work here. And we've been very supportive and will continue to be, no matter what the government says. But uh, I think it'd be great if all the other uh, CEOs were as you know, loud on this as, as I am.